in order for me to achieve the primary design goal, I have to split the Java code out of the view generation code. The easiest way for me to do that is to use the approach, the traditional model view controller approach, where I have a JSP, and the JSP calls out to Java Beans, and the Java Beans contain all of the business logic, all of the model conversion, and all of the, the error handling required. The second way, and potentially a cleaner way, is for me to use JSPs, standard actions, and Java Beans. You see in the first way, where I'm just using JSPs and Java Beans, I either have to use Java scriptlets or the JSP XML syntax to perform my Java logic, such as construction. When I transition into the JSP plus standard actions plus Java Beans style, many of the common things, like construction or retrieving an object property, are tagified in an HTML structure allowing me to minimize the Java code. The third option, and that is the option that we're going to look at today, is the idea that I can use JSPs with standard actions, the standard tag library, and Java beans to nearly remove all of the Java code from my JSP. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of those different scenarios. The first scenario is the example where I have a JSP that contains Java logic to access a Java bean. If you were to open up in your IDE JSP-JavaBeans.JSP within the examples directory, you will see the code that is represented before you. The things to notice within this simple JSP is that the JSP is performing its purpose in life meaning it is generating the HTML, the view presentation of the Java Bean properties. However, when the JSP generates its HTML, you'll notice that it is using standard Java syntax to work with the Java Bean. From a management perspective, a maintenance perspective. Code like this is not as easy to maintain as code that would be purely focused on view presentation. Functionally, this JSP retrieves an instance of the properties being. The properties being behind the scenes will uh, load in some properties, and then the JSP prints off each value in that properties key value map within a table. So hopefully you can see that is not the cleanest design. It does not achieve our primary goal of removing business logic from our JSP. Standard actions were an evolution of the JSP technology. They were uh, released to address common Java, thing, Java functionality such as object creation and object lifecycle management. JSP standard actions um, are used quite commonly within JSP development. There are a very few number of JSP actions that you can use. Uh, they either deal with object management, as I just mo mentioned, or they deal with navigation, such as request redirection through forwarding, or content inclusion through include statements. JSP standard actions are the second design approach within the continuum. The thing that you'll notice in this example, the JSP standard action Java beans.jsp, is that the construction process of the Java bean has been simplified. I no longer need to use the JSP scriptlet tag to create an object. I, instead, I can use what appears to be an HTML tag to create an object. When I use the JSP useBean tag, I name the variable that I will refer to in my JSP code using the ID attribute. I define the type of the variable using the class attribute. 
JSP standard actions are actually implemented using an XML structure. So anytime I were to use a standard action, I need to close the tag with a slash. Once I have created the bean, you'll notice that I can go ahead and use the bean within my scriptlet code. From a design perspective, the JSP standard action has removed a portion of the Java code, but there is still a significant portion of scriptlet oriented or Java logic oriented code within our JSP. So it does not quite get us to the primary design goal of no Java logic within our view. That brings us to the third design approach. The third design approach is JSTL. JSTL simplistically is an extension of the JSP standard actions. The way that I would work with JSTL looks like the way that I would work with JSP standard actions. The motivations for JSTL are similar to the motivations for the JSP standard actions. They do adopt an XML tagged syntax, but they provide much more functionality than the core standard actions do. The one thing to be aware of about JSTL is that it is a standards-driven tag library. There are many different types of tag libraries. Custom tag libraries are typically built by internal software development applications to application developers to be used within their application. Non-standard tag libraries are typically built by third-party vendors, whether they are for-profit or non-profit vendors. IBM, for example, provides a set of tags that can be used within JSPs that are not standards-based. Apache is another organization that provides a set of tags to simplify JSP development, but again, are not standards-based. The purpose behind the standards-based tag library is that it provides a guarantee to developers that every Java EE application server they use will have an implementation. So let's look at a basic example of a JSP that has been rewritten using the JSP standard action tags as well as JSTL. The first thing that you'll notice in this example, starting on line three, is that we are using the JSP use bean tag. So that's a direct carryover from the previous example. The second thing that you'll notice is that I have a new set of tags, for example, on line 13, line 15, or line 16. Those new set of tags are defined using a tag library directive. Up at the top on line one, if you're not familiar with it, is a tag library directive. Tag library directive adopts the standard JSP directive syntax. Uh, keyword is tag lib, and then to fill in. We will return to uh, the discussion of the tag library directive in just a moment. The thing that I want you to recognize, however, is not the details about JSTL. Rather, I would like you to, to notice there is no Java code in this JSP. From a maintenance perspective, the HTML developer is not required to understand Java or Java syntax to access a Java bean, access a property of a Java bean, and display its output. The HTML developer only needs to know standard HTML and have some familiarity with an ECMAScript language. That concludes the first lesson, what is JSTL?